recording. <laughs> All right. Hello, so everybody. We are, we are without Ribbon today. He is coughing up a lung. We're out uh, without a proper episode today. This is a little, what do we call it, mini episode? Mini episode, sort of dissonant thing. Dissonant waves, semi dissonant waves. More like yeah. dissonant, um, <laughs> dissonant tides. Yeah, it, it might it might get get up there with uh, with uh, today's uh, today's topic. Get up there? What do you mean by that? Uh, I, I, I I'm not I'm not gonna spoil it too much, but I didn't really think too too highly of the EP we listened to. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I I only had one listen to it, so I'm gonna I'm gonna be as fair as I can. Okay. All right, so this is a mini episode. We're just covering one EP today, just because of how things work out in our schedules. Yeah. And Riddle being sick. And so we decided to go into the world of K pop and go for literally the best selling album in South Korea in decades uh, BTS's Map of the Soul, Persona. Um, big album this year. I know uh, the last episode we talked about doing 2019 albums. We're still going to do that next episode. This is just yep. a little pit stop on the way there. This is, yep, this is just to tide you over until we can record the main episode. You know, it's fitting because it's also released in 2019, Nap of the Soul. So yep. it's a little little taste of what we're going to be doing back next in, time. Back in April, I want to say. Yeah. And so before we get into it, let's talk about our history of K-pop. Trex, you want to go with you first? Oh, literally no history. Your first K-pop ever? Like... I have listened to exactly zero K-pop songs intentionally before this album. All right, so for me, I am not really familiar with K-pop. I had a roommate who loved K-pop a lot, and he played it all the time. I I recognize some songs by sound. I don't know their names. He's played me a lot of videos on YouTube that I appreciated but never got into. So I have a passing familiarity, I guess. I've heard of BTS before. I, I have heard of them before and how crazy their fan base is. And that's about yes. as far as I'm going to go with that sentence. BTS, uh, I heard about this album at least. Uh, it was on like, I want to say like Jimmy Kimmel or something like that, or maybe Jimmy Fallon. And they were on SNL, like performing. It was the first, like, I think, first Asian band at all to be performing on Saturday Night Live, which is really that's cool. cool. That is pretty cool. This album has had a lot of traction here. It is like it was like number one on the charts here. It was number one on the charts in several countries. And to be clear, we made it to, we made this decision to do this like literally yesterday. So yeah, we we haven't had too much time. I list, I ended up listening to it a lot because I I, I kind of liked it. I was really into like the flow of it. So you know, I listened to it some more. I, I listened to it once. Right, and you know that that's I will with, fully with admit day, I listened to it once. With a day to prepare, that's okay. We're, we're, we're going to do this. Yeah. All right. So, first impressions. You have one listen, tricks. What do you remember? Uh, I just remember being streamed at in Korean, for the most part. Like, I'm not the biggest fan of rap as it was, and, like, the Korean rap intro kind of threw me off guard, and I wasn't really expecting that. Yeah, so that's a, that's a thing, is that K-pop is a very... Disarming name. It is K. It is Korean. It is pop. It is you know the Korean pop music industry. But that's kind of like saying that animation is a genre, and it's not. I mean, K-pop encompasses so much more than just pop music. There's you know different kinds of genres and styles thrown in there. It's yeah, much that, more. That makes sense. Like I mean, I remember when my roommate was showing me stuff. There were bands that sounded just like if the Backstreet Boys had just kept going. You know that that kind of sound. And there were, yeah. there were, and there's been there's a bunch of different sounds, and this is one of them. BTS is like a big band. There's like a bunch of members. They all different interests. Um, I kind of want to pronounce their names, but I'm gonna get it wrong. I don't want to be yelled at. Yeah, let's just err on the side of caution for all of that. You know, one one of their names is um, Suga. For a shooting guard in basketball, so it's a, hopefully a pretty easy way to pronounce that. Um, Jungkook. Yeah, that's uh, I think that's yeah, that's based on their name. You know, they, a lot of them are like mononyms or stage names. Yeah, some of them are based on like either first name or last name or 
something like that. Yeah. There's a guy named just V. I don't know why, but uh, yes. Yeah. This is as an incredibly white individual commenting on uh, K-pop. That K-pop. That, I mean, we're both white. This is just something... You know, we wanted to do something different just to not do the episode that we're going to plan. Oh, yeah. And it was like, let's let's just uh, let's do an episode about something individually. And then K-pop, why not? Yeah. So, yeah. So for this me... Kind of, go ahead. I was just going to say, this is just completely spur of the moment. We had literally no plans to do this. And so I, I'm actually... I'm glad we did it. What were you going to say? Actually what? I didn't say anything. So I'm glad we did it. Um, I might start listening to more K-pop. And like, and then like the thing yeah. too is to, is to recognize that this is literally for the moment like the biggest entry point, like the easiest way to get into it. Because, like I yeah. said, this is like the highest selling album in South Korea. Period. Yeah, and I, I think at this entry point, if it's not, if uh, like my initial reaction was what it was, I think bring me out for. I mean, that's, I mean, yeah, there's initial reaction, and then there's, you know, some stuff you gotta live with, some stuff you gotta just take it as it comes. Like I said, if I didn't have that um, foreknowledge, as little as it was, I don't know if I ever would have yeah. thought of doing this. I, yeah. I probably would have never thought about doing it. Far out of the scope of the stuff I listen to. Yeah, I like I like being diverse and just keep listening to new things and be interesting with it. I really try to so far at least I've been trying to bring that. I hope I've been successful. I don't know. You can yell at us if you'd like. I, I feel like you have been you've been you've um, brought like some weirder stuff to people too. Yeah, yeah, like, I don't like want to the, even... Dev, the, the Devin Townsend. Like you've suggested pop albums and uh kind of like obscure like metal artist, so I'd say that you're doing a good job of keeping yeah, and like of Montreal and Aeroplane, yeah, oh, of course. Of course. But yeah. So so here's something else I wanted I wanted to mention. Uh Map of the Soul is an EP. It is seven tracks and it is twenty six minutes, I wanna say. Six twenty seven minutes. To be honest, it felt longer. Now um we talked about we mentioned this briefly, so I'm just gonna ask you how long is Petite League's uh, Rattler? Yes. The the album I chose for next week is Rattler. And it's like how long? Uh, I want to say 30 minutes. Yeah, it's ten like 29, songs. 30 minutes. And it's like maybe 10 songs, right? It's 10 or ten or 11. I think it might actually be exactly 10. And- that, that really leads me to ask, like, what is an EP, really? What is an LP, really? Like, what does that distinction mean anymore? Yeah, I mean, and then you have stuff, people like uh, the Decemberists released their last album on a 10-inch vinyl. Yeah. And it, I have a 45, uh, I, I recently purchased a 45 RPM full-size record, which I didn't even... You get recordings in the Middle East from last week, just to, just to double-check that, because that's also an EP, and that's 26 minutes. And that's five tracks. And th- that one's not as many tracks. That I guess that fits the more traditional idea of what an EP is. But, like, for the length and for everything like that, it's almost a weird yeah. distinction to make anymore. Yeah, well, I mean, if you're going by number of tracks, by that logic, uh, the album Hemispheres by Rush is an EP because it's four songs on it. But two of yeah, but those I mean, songs, uh, one is 20 it, minutes long and one is 10 minutes long. I mean, it, it's a combination of tracks and length overall. Yeah, it's it's something that didn't that lacks kind of its own definition as it is right now. Back in the day, with actual LPs, like there was actual like size, like EPs were yeah. smaller physically than like a record. Oh yeah, the uh, seven inch discs. Right. So now it's like I would almost say EPs are kind of like the 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 in between projects, like the. I think we talked about it was kind of a statement of where they were right now. Almost kind of a minor project compared to a major project like an album. Yeah. But again, Map of the Soul, highest selling album in North Korea and South Korea. Wow, sorry. Highest selling album in South Korea. I think the highest selling album in North Korea 
just uh their whatever their anthem on you know I, I i really yeah let's just i i'm so sorry i don't i don't want to let's go let's go past that <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm, I'm sorry the, the joke was there i am so sorry to anyone who's offended by that um yeah so it's an ep it's the highest selling album in south korea bts is unstoppable EPLP really means nothing. Now let's actually talk about the songs. Um, interesting things to note off the hand. Um, this uh, album features a couple um, Western artists. Halsey being one. Ed Sheeran wrote on a different song. So that kind of shows how their crossover appeal has been working. That they're able to get these big names in America to, or in England I guess too, to come and work with them yeah and it's interesting um i feel like k-pop has a lot of specific names and like ideas for how things should be done i mean there's a lot of stories out there about the k-pop industry we're not going to go into one now a lot of stuff that's not super great a lot of stuff that's interesting but they have stuff like unit songs and unit songs are kind of when a few members of the group go and do their own thing and it has a different sound sometimes. It does something a little bit different. Introduces another um, perspective to the album. And uh, the sixth track, Jamai Vu, I think that's what it's pronounced as, is a unit track because it features three of the members instead of all seven. Yeah, that's French. Uh, French is as good as my career. My friend, my French is Russ. But no, Jamai Vu is French, actually. Yes. All right. So, beyond the um, the intro, anything else you like remember offhand? Because you just mentioned the. the, the I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be honest. To me, it felt like uh, it. I I think I might have like my headphones balanced with the way that I listen to music, because this was just like a um, really bassy drums and uh, in the uh, I just kind of voices over top of it and that's about all i heard for the most part i didn't really hear really? Too much melody you didn't hear a lot of melody i not that i remember nothing like wormed its way into my ear i mean yeah i mean for at least for me at least just this one day i'm not gonna say that i remember everything about all the songs i mostly have just like bits and pieces here and there and you know listening to it again like the last 10 minutes was like helpful to remember oh home is this make it right is this boy with love is this so but maybe with time you know if i were to keep listening that would you know it would become easier to me but yeah that's it's not yeah, I'm sure, I'm it's sure not the most hooky more. you know it's no. not the most like you're going to remember it right away all the time which is fine not every song has to be like that yeah but i feel like if you're putting out an album and it's like a number one album have at least one hooky song. I mean, uh, Boy of Love has that Oh My 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 chorus, which is, to me, me became really memorable. But, yeah, listening to it once versus listening to it, listening to it a handful of times, it, it kind of comes with... Yeah. Yeah. Um, Com- comes with... Yep. This is a lot like uh, forgetting you have an essay due the next day and then bullshitting uh, for a solid 30 minutes on paper. This is the podcast for that. Yeah. Um, I'm bringing all the information I have kind of synthesized together. I mean, like, I don't want to disappoint all the BTS fans that are listening to this all and or BTS it. themselves in case BTS somehow listens that. to this. High hopes. Oh, Sugar, I'm sure you're really cool. Um, I'm, I'm yeah. sure I'm sure you're cool if somehow you end up finding like, literally the most unknown podcast ever. Actually, no, we have a hundred. I think we have a hundred total views. We gotta start somewhere. Let me let me check uh, our YouTube analytics. Oh no, I was wrong. It's fifty-five. You know, we. We'll get there. Just got to keep going. Yeah, I mean, yep. Keep building momentum. And, you know, being consistent, doing different things, even if it's not as 
you know, as in depth as we would hope for it to be. Just keep trying. Yep. And, and I like it's not always successful, I think, with all of us, but I like constantly going to different things like this to kind of keep it fresh. Because if we just listened to the yeah, same thing, yeah, if we stayed bubbles, it would be boring. Yeah. And I mean, you you did a good job introducing Smash Mouth into the mix early on. Yeah, I felt I felt as weird as a move that was. I felt like it it was fun. Yeah, and I think that's what we have to keep reminding ourselves that this is fun. Yeah, this is something we do as a hobby because it's not like we're making money off of it. No, all fifty the listens. Second, uh, 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 the second we start getting sponsorship deals, I will start talks. Start what? Talks. Talks? We'd have to figure out a ton of shit if we ended up getting sponsored. Oh, yeah. Maybe not forgetting the country that you're talking, the, 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 um, the, al- the artists are from. That'd be good. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I don't think I did that today. I, 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 I said, almost said the wrong name, and I am still really sorry for that. Please don't hate us. Um, uh, don't murder us, K-pop fans. Or, or anybody. Well, we, we are well-meaning idiots. I don't know. What do you think of like artists like Halsey or Ed Sheeran coming in and just kind of, you know, this is, hey, BTS is popular. I, Let's get them together. I, that's, that's cool. As, like, as someone who doesn't, is not the biggest fan of Ed Sheeran and not the biggest fan of, of K-pop, but I can understand how big things are. Uh, it would be mm-hmm. kind of like if I were to bring it like the geekier world, having a more modern uh, superhero crossover that doesn't, never really had happened and doesn't really make a lot of sense, but works really well. Yeah. I just, it makes me curious what else they could do. Like, are they just looking to, like, the th- like to, to dive back a little bit into what we're going to talk about next week. LSD, my pick. It just feels like Labyrinth Sia and um, Diplo kind of just got together partially from their record label, partially out of interest. So, some, some, something about this, I like it, but it's like how much of this is just like the the record labels being like, yo, let's get these together versus like an actual like I have a feeling it is thing. more of a uh, more of a record label put together. It can be good, but it has to work. And here it works. Yeah. But like, it, that's the important thing works. is that it has to work. Like, that's one of the reasons why I stay more within the realm of I like uh, lesser known bands. Is, um, People like, letting Claypool Delirium? Of, yeah. And like, yeah, there's a lot, of, a lot of crossover that people do in the indie realm that can't really happen with labels. Uh, because with a lot of the independent labels, if they're like really independently owned, They'll tell you to do whatever, and they collaborate with other labels all the time. Yeah, and in you know the K-pop industry, there's a lot of stories of just kind of the, the artists have to perform and do the things that they have to do, whether it's good for them or not, all the time. Yeah, and I, I've heard similar things about the J-pop industry, which I'm a little bit. I mean, like. Going into the most mainstream versions of these industries, whether it is American pop or J pop or K pop or whatever else, there is um like a certain degree of almost automation. It's kind of a machine where it just keeps getting pumped out, pumped out, no matter and what, no matter who. Replace parts if they're not working. You know, that's I think that's part of why some people stray away from pop and don't really get into it as much. I still try to, you know, be as open as I can to different things while recognizing that sometimes it can be a problem the way things are produced. Yeah. I'm not saying, I don't know how much of that is true here, if at all. I don't know what conditions this album was made under. I don't know if that's even really out there because it's still pretty new. Just based on the stories yeah. here. It makes you wonder. I don't know. Trix, talk about something. Um, well, I mean, it's, it's K-pop. Um, I, again, 
I, I feel like there's not too much I can weigh in on because I, I only listen to the album ones, and I will fully admit that I only listen to the album ones. And I, if I listen to it a few more times, I might start to garner an enjoyment for it and um, that sort of thing. So if you check in in our next in our episode next week, maybe I'll weigh in on it a little bit more. Do we have an update on BTS? Is that is that what you're saying? Yeah, I, well, at least on my enjoyment of BTS, we might have that in the episode. First thing, update. Drake's I'll, interest I'll it, on BTS. I'll, I'll give it a couple more listens. And yeah, make it right, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, it's kind of it, honestly. Yeah, like, I mean, it, it's, it's a mini episode. This, this can go for... A third of the length of uh, a normal episode, which we've we've we, we've reached. It, it's hard to go into depth among like lyrics and stuff when a it's sung in a different language, and you yes. know this is a thing where I can I can enjoy like just hearing the sounds and hearing the like the music and not worrying about necessarily what the like, what the lyrics are because I'm trying to look for like the translations and I don't really find them yet and I don't understand them and there's some English sure but. It's a good way for me, yeah. at least, to like not worry about it as much and just have fun. I will say that the few English lines they had in there were kind of jarring. I mean, that's that kind of sense. jarring, uh, like you said? My, yeah, because like my brain immediately hooked onto, oh, you can understand that. Yeah, and I think that's kind of something that K-pop has done, especially as it's gotten more popular in the West, of trying to have that yeah. crossover appeal. I, I really appreciate the way that it just mixes genres and you know, there's hip hop. Um, the last song, Dionysus, is like a rap rock song. And, you know, that's far away from the way we consider like a poppy sound. But for me, it worked. For me, it's kind of. It is like the best incarnation of what the machine like K pop can pump out of just a bunch of different styles and songs coming together to make something that I think is listenable. And like interesting, yeah, it's, it's it is a ve- it's very interesting. Yeah, I mean, is it even worth asking you if you had a favorite or not favorite? <laughs> uh, I literally have. I, I I'm gonna be honest. I can't tell them apart myself. Okay, well, I'm gonna say this. I think the album is a really good ramp up to the end. Like it just builds and builds and builds. I think Blood yeah. of Love is a little bit higher than the some of the other ones around it because uh Halsey brings a lot to it surprisingly well not surprisingly i guess but like having a feature like that you know brings with it some other levels of levels of things that make the song stand out but overall it's a pretty good ramp up and i think dionysus is the best song on the album it's really the most interesting and the way it ends with everyone kind of coming together and really pushing the intensity is really cool definitely But yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. I probably will listen to more um, K-pop. I have definitely listened to more K-pop than I have in my life. Sometimes it just takes a map of the soul to show you the way. <laughs> Reveal your true persona. Uh, I th- I th- I might, my dumbass thought it was going to have something to do with the Shin Megami Tensei series. And that'd be cool. Alice should like license yeah, this stuff and I, get it in there. I, I've literally never played one of them. I mean, Persona soundtracks are also really cool, and they're we should listen to it at some point, maybe episode fifty-one or something. But right. yeah, I think that's well, pretty I much guess, an episode. I guess that's I guess that's a, our mini episode. I think I talked more than you. I apologize, but it's quite all right. I I felt like there wasn't much I could really weigh in on because I didn't. The album all that much. Well, we didn't offend all y'all K-pop fans. Uh, we probably did, and we're we're sorry. Uh, this has been Dissonant Waves or Dissonant Tides, whatever you want to call this mini episode. Uh, a dumb and a tricks. Next week, we're still covering LSD and um, the other two albums, uh, Petite League and uh, Bag Raiders. Yeah. That's still happening. Riddle, Riddlin will be here. We hope. Hope he yes, gets better. We, we hope he didn't catch some sort of Australian super flu. 
this. Please feel better. Hopefully you listen to this. Please listen to this, Ritalin. Yes, you're, mi- you're missing out on K-pop. I didn't even have to listen to K-pop to listen to this. It'd be really funny if you didn't. There's no context to what we're talking about. We, we should just force him to do a reaction to this. His his what reaction is- next week will be a reaction to this specifically, and you'll be reacting to more time with BTS. And I'll be reacting to all of it, just laughing into the mic. Hey, we're, we, we're getting incredibly meta six episodes in. That's how it happens. <laughs> Let's cut this off. Let's cut this off before we go too far. Yeah. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Greg, it's your cue. Greg. Fuck, I fucked up. Still recording.